In this video, we're going to look at a second strategy for finding matrix inverses, and we're going to use row reduction to do that. And so, uh, I've got a matrix A right here, and in my previous video, we found that the inverse of this matrix is right here. So I kind of put that down in the bottom corner so we can check ourselves, and then at the, at the end of this, we'll know if we're right or wrong. But our other strategy for, for finding the inverse of a matrix is to basically take your original matrix, which I'm going to write right here, and then kind of attach the identity matrix onto it. You can see how I kind of turned my 2 by 2 matrix into a 2 by 4 matrix, but these kind of right four elements are the identity matrix. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to then use um, row reduction to put this new matrix into what we call reduced row echelon form. And what that means is that means we want my new matrix to be this, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then the other four elements will be kind of right here. And I don't really know what those will be yet, but whatever those are should be our inverse. Okay? And so, so let's jump into it. I'll kind of show you what I mean right here. So I'm going to start with this matrix. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm trying to get a 1 in this top left element. You can see I want a 1 in that top left element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a row, I'm going to take row 1, and I'm going to replace it with row 1 minus row 2. Because I know if I do 4 minus 3, it will give me a 1. So if I do that, 4 minus 3 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. And then 1 minus 0 is um, 1. And then 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And I'm not going to do anything to the second row yet. 3, 2, 0, 1. Okay. And so then I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy my new matrix down here. And so now that I've gotten the 1 where I want, I've gotten my top left element to be a 1. I want this element to be a 0. Okay. And so one way of doing that is we're going to take row 2 and we're going to replace it with row 2 minus 3 times the first row. In other words, if I take this and multiply it by 3, that would be a 3 and 3 minus 3 is 0. Remember, I'm trying to make a 0 there. Okay? I would suggest that you, now that I'm kind of into this video, I realize I'm going pretty fast, I would suggest you watch another video on the process of row reduction so this doesn't look like something completely new to you because that would be confusing. And so I'm just going to copy my first row because we're not doing anything to our first row right now. But I'm taking my second row, and I'm subtracting 3 times the first row. So 3 minus 1 times 3, well, that's going to be a 0. 2 minus 3 times 1. 0 minus 3 times 1. And 1 minus 3 times negative 1. Well, ne let's see. Um, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 1 minus negative 3 would be a positive 4. Hopefully I didn't make a sign error there. All right, let me copy my matrix down. Okay, so I've copied it down. I've created my 1. I've created my 0. You can see I've created my 1. I've created my 0. Now I'm going to turn this element into a 0. So that's our next one. I'm going to turn this into a 0. And hopefully you're thinking this is actually going to be a, a pretty simple process. All I need to do is take row 1 and add row 2 to it. So if I do that, 1 plus negative 1 will give me the 0 I want right there, but it won't mess up this cell because 1 plus 0 will leave that as the 1 we want. So let's just do that real quick. I'm going to take row 1, and I'm going to replace it with row 1 plus row 2. And then let's kind of copy over here what we've got. So 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. And negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And then I'm just kind of copying down. And so I'm going to have to, I hate that I've run out of space. We've only got one step left. But I'm going to come up here and copy my matrix down. And so now that I'm here, we are almost where we want. We've created the 1. We've created the 0. We've created the 0. Now we just want a 1. See how close we are to having the matrix 1. I just want this to be a, um, actually, let me recopy that because I don't like the spacing that I have there. Okay, that's a little bit neater. But now I just want this to be a positive one. And so what you can do to any row is I could take row 2 and replace it with negative 1 times row 2. So I'm just multiplying that row by a scalar, and then I think we're going to be done, and we'll have a look at it. So I don't really want to mess with my first row, 1, 0, negative 2, 3. But then if I multiply by a negative 1, that makes that a positive 1. It makes that a positive 3, and it makes that a negative 4. Now look what we've created here. Here I've got this identity matrix. I've kind of almost moved it to the front by putting my matrix in reduced row form. But then that means that what's left, oops, that means that what's left after it right here 
is our inverse matrix. And you can kind of see from earlier, from that previous video, we know we're right because we got the same inverse matrix as we did um, using other methods. And so the moral of the story is this. What we're doing is we're taking our matrix, we're tacking an identity matrix onto the end of it, and then we're using this process called row reduction to change our rows around. And then when we end up getting this in what's called reduced row form, what you're left with on the end of it is your inverse matrix, okay? This works for a two by two as we've shown, but this process would also work for a three by three, a four by four, and a five by five, so on and so forth, although that process gets a little bit hairy.